carefully sit in the presence of god and listen the word of god and we will be edified and we will be corrected and we will be encouraged by the word of god this morning and uh, after that uh, again we will sing one more song and we worship god then uh, we will be having the the youth programs okay so let us all um, sit in the presence of god with a prayerful attitude amen so um, uh, i know that uh, there are uh, some uh, families attending through uh, zoom today and uh, we will be praying for them also as they are uh, maybe uh, some of them are sick and some of them are not able to make it today and uh, let's pray for them also and uh, let us bring everyone the mighty hand of god and uh, let me ask you who can remind me the the theme that i was speaking last week i forgot just remind me what i was preaching last week hosea what was the theme what was the theme the spiritual lessons the spiritual lessons from the life of life of action preachers action preachers thank you thank you and that was from hosea chapter hosea chapter 1 okay and uh, i told you that in the old testament um, god was using um, some of the preachers some of the prophets to communicate to convey the serious messages to the people of israel in different ways and different methods i mean god was using them in a different way that means uh, the prophet some of the prophets were not uh, just supposed to uh, share the message but they were supposed to do something they were supposed to uh, have some life experience in their life in their family life or in their personal life and through that through that i mean uh, uh, actions or through that experiences the prophets and the preachers were sharing or conveying the co- or communicating the serious messages to the people of israel that's what we were learning last week and uh, i was talking about the prophet hosea right i was talking about the prophet hosea and uh, he was the first example that i told you last week and we saw that hosea uh was a great prophet of god and uh, he was asked to he was told to or he was commanded to um marry a prostitute woman what was her name gomer gomer and then hmm, having three children the first son jezreel means yeah just the, the the word just yeah god will scatter then the second that is daughter mm. and then lo ami mm. lo ami means i will no longer have compassion or mercy on you lo ami means not my people very good thank you and yes and lo ruham you already told no lo ruhama yeah lo ruhama and lo lo ami and when we come to a uh, chapter chapter 2 uh, we read that i mean again god is calling them just simply ami that means you will be my people that means even though the people of god they were going away from the presence of god even though they were unfaithful i am faithful to you and still i love you that was the final when point that we have been discussing and even in the hosea chapter 3 especially verses 2 and 3 we read that hosea reunites with his wife by paying a price okay just like that jesus died for us and jesus paid the the the, the remission jesus paid the price for us and that was the blood of jesus christ and that is what we understand that we have that close connection and relationship with jesus because we are saved by the blood of jesus christ amen so the the point that we were discussing that even though prophet hosea was going through a, a tough situation a difficult situation in his life when god was planning 
to share a wonderful message to the people of Israel that even though you are faith unfaithful, I am still faithful, I am loving you and when you come back to me, I mean when you come back to me, you will have a reunion with God and you will enjoy the presence of God, the fellowship of God and the relationship with God. I mean, so that's what we were discussing in the last week and today we are going to see the next, the second example from the Bible, especially that also is a, is a, is a prophet Ezekiel. Okay, prophet Ezekiel. Okay, so we are going to read uh, Ezekiel chapter 24 verses 15 to 19. Ezekiel chapter 24 verses 15 to 19. Somebody can read that verse. You know, you know, I have no time to share about the, the historical factors of uh, the book of Ezekiel or the prophet Ezekiel. Uh, and, and because of the lack of time, let us directly go to chapter 24. And we have many things to share from, uh, from the book of Ezekiel and there are many things to share about uh, the prophet Ezekiel also. But we are not spending time for that. But directly we are going to uh, chapter 24. Okay, when you, when you go to chapter 24 and uh, God is giving a specific message and specific lesson uh, 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 for the people of Israel through the prophet Ezekiel. Okay, so let us see what was that message and what was the, the, the application for every one of us, those who are sitting here. I mean, so when you study that, uh, uh, particularly that chapter 24, you know, we, we understand that Ezekiel was commanded by God not to grieve the death of his wife. Okay, so we understand that um, Ezekiel's wife died suddenly, but he was not allowed. He was not allowed to 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 mourn or to cry. Okay, because of the to to grieve because of the death of his uh, the sudden death of his wife. Okay, and uh, we know that in, in in that verse we understand he became a widower within no time. And Ezekiel had to pay a great price than all other prophets. Okay, every prophets were paying a price for delivering a message. Okay, we know that, especially when we saw that Hosea and Isaiah and every every prophet that God was asking them that you have to do this and you have to do this action to deliver a message, to communicate a message to the people of Israel. In the same way, he had to give more price to, 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 to deliver a message, to communicate a message to the people of Israel. That's what we read there. Okay, so when his wife has died, okay, we understand you know, he was not able to cry and he was not able to grieve okay we know that okay uh, if somebody uh, who is so close to us and somebody who is uh, uh, very very important for us when if if somebody who is very close to us die what we do hmm? tell me what, what what are we what are you going to do and what you did in the in the past okay? if somebody I mean, dying you know very close to you very important to you Maybe your father or your mother or your, your children. Okay. We mourn about them. And simply mourning? Huh? Crying. Yeah. Then? Ah. Ah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Correct. No washing clothes and no bathing. Okay. No, nothing. You know, sometimes, you know, the people are very nervous about that. You know, when somebody who is so close to us is dying, like, um, you know, first of all, we will do one thing. All of a sudden, if you are a believer, you will call pastor, right? You'll call pastor and saying that, okay, oh, my dad or my mom, huh? my child died. I mean, pastor, please come for, for, please come here and pray for us. I mean, so we are asking uh, uh, to the people and we will uh, uh, announce in the church and we will uh, uh, inform to the pastor and we are saying that, okay, oh, this is what is happening in my life and I am, I'm so, I'm disturbed. I don't know what to do. I mean, come and help me, right? I mean, we will do many things at that point. 
point. Okay, we will do many things at that point, and we are calling our. I mean, uh, uh, we we may not be able to call our uh, relatives, the other people, but we will arrange someone to call and inform to the other people also that let them also know that. I mean, uh, my I mean important person or my in my life, my I mean someone who is so close to me is died. Okay, but the same type thing is happening in the life of Ezekiel. You know, when his beloved wife has died, he was not allowed to do anything. He was supposed to be there for, for a while and he was not supposed to mourn. He was not supposed to do something and he was not supposed to announce it to anyone. He was supposed to be there for still and he was, okay, the, the, the thing which is I mean, uh, written there in uh, maybe verses uh, I mean, 15 and 16 and 17 you will understand I mean what the Lord was telling him to not to do and to do okay so for example in those days we know that if someone who is very important and if someone who is very close to a person die and they were supposed to let others know that I mean that by doing something I mean publicly I mean they need to do something publicly then only the other people will know that I mean this person lost somebody who was so close to him just like in those days when they were wearing the sackcloth we are in the sackcloth and sprinkling the ashes and the dust on the head and shaving the hair and beard and laying on the ground, walking around barefoot. When they were supposed to do all those things to know others, to, to let know others that this is happening in my personal life. I lost somebody who is so close to me. Amen. So this was supposed to do all those people. I mean, they were I mean, wearing a sackcloth and crying and sprinkling the ashes and the dust on the head and shaving the hair and beard and laying on the ground and they're crying, crying, crying. Let others know that somebody who was lovingly and who was I mean, so close to him is his is died. But you know, doing these all things, they were letting other people to know that this is happening in my personal life. But Ezekiel, Ezekiel was not, I mean, uh, not, I mean, uh, doing, not allowed to doing, I mean, do, I mean, all these things when his beloved wife has died. Okay, he was forbidden to do something. That's what we read, the, the things that you will understand. It says that, when a son of man, behold, I am about to take from you the desire of your eyes. Okay, listen. So verse 16, verse 16, it says that, Son of man, behold, I am about to take from you the desire of your eyes. Desire of your eyes means your beloved wife. Okay? Your beloved wife, I'm taking her. I'm taking her. And, but you shall not mourn and you shall not weep. And your tears shall not come. Groan silently. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind on your turban and put your shoes on your feet. And do not cover your Masras and do not eat the bread of men. That means on those days when somebody is dying in a house, when the other people, his friends or relatives or somebody, they used to bring the bread, bring the food for the, those people. And he was not supposed to eat that food also. Okay? Suppose, you know, if, if somebody is bringing the food for that family because they are grieving and they lost their somebody who was, uh, I mean, so close to them. Even Ezekiel lost his wife and he was grieving and he was mourning silently and he was not announcing to anyone. At the same time, you no, know, his relatives or his friends are, I mean, bringing some of the food to that family or that family members. I mean, remember, you know, he was not able to eat that food also and he was not able to, I mean, receive that food and I mean enjoy that food but we understand that they were I mean doing something uh, in, a, in, a, in a different way that you know Ezekiel was not allowed to even though he was not allowed to do so I mean it was to convey that important message to the people of Israel you know when Ezekiel was going through this difficult situation this life experience God was telling that through that, you are going to deliver an important message to the people of God. Hallelujah. Remember one thing, my dear, I mean, brothers and sisters. When some of the people, some of the leaders are going through the, I mean, troublesome situation. When some of the uh, leaders are going through the, I mean, uh, difficult situation and experiences. I mean, God is planning that through that experience. I mean, we are getting an important message from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, let me tell you one thing. 
you know, when uh, I was ministering in India, uh, uh, in, it was, it was uh, years ago, you know, when I was uh, ministering in India, you know, one night I was not able to, it, able to sleep. You know, I, I, I was trying to sleep by 10, 10.30, but I was not able to sleep and, uh, I mean, just, I mean, uh, uh, and 2 o'clock and 2.30 and 3 o'clock. Up to 3 o'clock in the morning, I was not able to sleep and uh, I, I was just, I mean, sitting there and uh, asking God, what happened to me, oh God, and uh, what is the problem and what is the problem that I did? Eh? What is the mistake that I did that uh, I'm not able to sleep? Then... I mean, I just I was reading the uh, reading the Bible, and I was receiving a, a special revelation from the Bible, and that was a Saturday. Okay, Saturday. You know, you know that if, if we are not able to, I mean, uh, 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 sleep on Saturday, when how can I uh, minister on Sunday? Okay, it is not possible. But no. The, the thing which happened was, I was just sitting there. I was reading that portion, and on Sunday. I could know that there was a wonderful message I was delivering to the people even though I was not able to sleep on the Saturday night. When on Sunday, God was speaking to the people and many people were delivered with that word only because I had to go through that experience, that, that, that painful experience of, I mean, without sleeping. I was struggling so much. I was struggling so much. And I mean, I came to know that it was with the purpose of God that that God is, I mean, planning to give a wonderful message for the people of God. And the same thing is happening in the life of Ezekiel also. Ezekiel was going through the strugglesome situation. Even when his wife has died, he was not able to cry. He was not able to make a sound. And he was not able to do anything usually what the people are doing. But he was saying that, okay, I mean, I have a special message to deliver to the people of God. That's the reason, I mean, I am going through this, I mean, particular situation. But let me see what was the lesson or what was the message that God was planning to give them. It is in chapter 24, verses 21 and 25. Somebody can read that verse. 21 and 25. Only two verses. Mm. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Mm. I take away their stronghold, their joy and glory, the delight of their eye, their heart's desire, and their sons and daughters as well. Verse 26. On that day, 25, 25. Okay, okay. See, what is happening here? You know, when God was delivering this message and communicating this message to the people of Israel, he was not to do something, but it was to explain them that the destruction of the Jerusalem temple is going to happen. The Jerusalem temple is going to be destroyed. That was the message and that was the lesson which was given for Ezekiel and he was sharing that to the people of Israel. Okay, we know that Ezekiel had an attachment, a close attachment and close relationship with, with, with his wife. And he was so delighted in her, and he was so proud about her, but he lost that woman, that wife, suddenly. This is happening in the life of Ezekiel. You know, he was so delighted. That's what, that's what we are reading in, 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 in verse 21. That speak to the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am about to profane my sanctuary, the pride of your power, the desire of your eyes, and the, the, the delight of your soul, and your sons and your daughters, whom you have left behind, will fall by this word. That means something which is I mean, unexpectedly going to happen for the people of Israel. That means the temple which they were believing that the temple, nobody can destroy the temple of Jerusalem. It was their, 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 their matter of proud. Okay? They were always proud about the Jerusalem temple and they were always proud about the I mean they were always enjoying the ritualistic thing which is happening in the in the temple and, and always when these people were enjoying and these people were proud about the temple, it's, it's true that it's it's good to be proud about the temple, but the reason um, it, it is coming I mean, later. You know, even though they were so happy about the temple of Jerusalem, they were so happy and it was a favorite thing for them and they were always enjoying that. What happened, what, what happened was God said, no, 
you are going to lose this temple. You are going to lose this temple and this temple will be destroyed. You know that, uh, I mean, about what temple, uh, about the, uh, about what temple, I mean, uh, 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 God was telling to the people there. You know, how many temples were there in Jerusalem? Who built the first temple? Who built the first temple? Solomon built the first temple then. The second one. Huh? The, 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 the first, I mean, a temple which was built by uh, Solomon was destroyed by? The Babylonians. Okay. Then the second one. Nehemiah and Zerubbabel. Okay. Nehemiah was building the, the wall of the Jerusalem and Zerubbabel. They came from the, uh, uh, the captivity of, uh, of Babylon and they came and they were building the second temple. Okay. Second temple and that was the temple, the second one. Okay. By Zerubbabel. Then that also was destroyed. That also was? That was not destroyed? No. It was not destroyed. Okay, so that temple, the Serubabel temple, it was not destroyed, but what happened? It was having some problem with that when the enemies were attacking Jerusalem. But at the same time, during the time of Jesus, during the time of Jesus, Herod, the great king, Herod, the great king, he came and he was, uh, what is that you can say, maybe, uh, you know, I mean, a renovation was done and decoration was done and he was expanding the, the, uh, the, the temple and everything he did, all the decorations and everything. Okay, so when Herod, the king was doing all those things, it was not for glory of God, you know, Herod, the king, he was not doing all those things for the glory of God, but only for his own fame and his popularity. This is the problem. Okay, that's what, you know, when in, in, in Mark chapter 13, uh, can you read that verse? Maybe uh, Mark chapter 13, uh, verses 1 and 2, that uh, uh, one disciple was, uh, I mean, one disciple was asking to Jesus, Master, Master, I mean, see this, uh, I mean, wonderful building and wonderful stone which is built up here. Yeah, read that. Mark chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Uh. The temple, one of his disciples said to him, Okay, listen, you know, the, the temple, the Jerusalem temple was so precious to the people of God. Okay, even in, during the time of Jesus, when Herod was doing the renovation and uh, when he was uh, decorating it and uh, uh, doing all the, the works uh, uh, inside, the, inside the ritualistic items and everything, and while he was doing all the recreations and all the, but beautifully he was making, I mean, this thing, you know, the people were so excited to see that building. That's the reason they were saying, disciple was saying to Jesus that, see master, how beautifully is made this temple. And how, I mean, beautifully and wonderfully, uh, wonderful is the stones on it. Okay. And see that, I mean, how it is, I mean, how proudful it is, it, it is to see that. And when they were asking to him, you now Jesus said, when it's going to be destroyed. Okay, it's going to be destroyed. You are saying that okay, this is a beautiful temple, and you are all. I mean, for for you, this temple is a. I mean, a precious temple, and you are so favorite to this temple, and you are proud about the temple. But Jesus said, no, no, no. You are going to see that this is going to be destroyed. Okay, did it destroyed? Yes, by by Nero the emperor in AD seventy. You know, when Nero was destroying this temple. You know, God, Jesus said, no, no, this is going to be, this is going to be destroyed and this is not going to be for, for long time, but this will be destroying. But when, when Jesus said this, the disciples were not able to believe that. They were not able to believe that. But at the same time, these people were saying, no, 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 how beautifully it is built and how the, how beautiful stones are there. Now we are so proud about that. But Jesus said, you are proud about the temple. But you are not proud about your God and the word, God, word of God. That's the reason that this Jerusalem temple is going to be destroyed. You know, when I was I mean, studying and meditating this word, the Spirit of the Lord was giving a special I mean, a, a word to me that, to say that the thing that we are so favorite to, I mean, the things that we are loving so much, the earthly things, okay? The earthly things, maybe, I mean, uh, our, our family, or our, uh, our children, or our parents, or our relatives, or friends, or somebody, whoever it may be. When, when we are giving more importance and more priority for all those earthly things, God is saying that if you are losing them, 
what you will do men this is the message this is the lesson that god is giving to the people of god you know in kerala we used to hear somebody saying that okay njangal yakoba parambaryam okke vittu ingotu vannadana lekathonikka parambaryam vittu vannadana njangal avadu endo undayirunnu velliya palli undayirunnu pattakar undayirunnu cathedral endo cathedral okke undayirunnu i mean ivada ningada gootathil vannitte do you have a church ningalku or church undo or building undo or cemetery undo maricha evade adakkum Okay. this is the question that the, that the kerala people are asking in the, the orthodox people are asking in kerala you know they are saying oh we are leaving all our I mean, cathedral the big cathedral is huge cathedral and palli and pattakar all ubheshichittu veruva so when we are coming to your church when is there anything is there a own building to worship the lord huh? is there is there is there, a, is there a priest we don't have a priest and we we don't have an own building also right when we don't have a building also and we are we are trying for that okay we will be getting i mean on building in 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 few days i mean so we believe that at the same time the thing which i mean god wanted to tell to the people of israel here is that the temple of jerusalem is so precious to you like uh, ezekiel's wife okay so ezekiel was loving um and his wife beloved wife very well and he was i mean uh, she was a favorite person for ezekiel but god said no i'm going to take her i'm going to take her and and she is going to die suddenly and what you are going to do men god said you cannot do anything i mean sit there silently I men don't mourn about that and be silently sit there okay even though he was going through that difficult situation god said this is going to happen for the people of israel that means when when you are losing somebody which is so close to you when we are losing something which is very close to us and when we are losing something which is favorite for us I men what you are doing and when i mean where you are trusting even you know when um, god was asking to abraham you take your only begotten son isaac and sacrifice him right when god said you take him i mean he, he could have taken I men other person who was that other son the first son ismail okay and he could have taken ismail but he didn't take ismail he said okay god said you have to take isaac only eh? don't take anybody you take isaac and go to the to the mountain and sacrifice that person you know when god was saying to abraham that thing he may be thinking why god is saying me to take only isaac I mean you know you know after waiting for 25 years after getting the promise I mean i got this son but why god is telling me to to sacrifice that boy sacrifice that isaac I mean the thing is god wanted to know you do you do you love your son isaac more than god or the word of god I men this is the thing that whom you love in this world the earthly things or earthly person I mean and you are do you love or are you loving or a, 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 a person or a thing is favorite for you than god you know this is what is happening many times in christian's life also you know we are not giving preference for god and god's word I men and we are supposed to that is the application there you know what is the application hallelujah do not be more attached with the earthly things and let god and his word be precious to us hallelujah this is the application this morning towards the people of god those who are sitting here and the bible says that when when you are trusting in the lord when sometimes you if even though you are losing something of this world hallelujah when the, the things or the persons that when whom you love too much when which is which is so close to you and who is so close to you if you are losing that or that person when even then you will be able to trust in the lord and even then you will be believing in god and you will be call upon the name of the lord hallelujah but what is happening many times in our lives when we are giving more importance for the earthly things we are giving more importance for the earthly things and we are giving giving more priority for the earthly things ee logathinte karyangalukku vendi nammal endu cheyunu koodal munganana kodukkunnathukonde devathe aalamai snehikka namakku sadhikkunnilla hallelujah ennal idinellam vyathasthapettukonde devathe kudalaayittu snehikkan nammal thayaaragumbodana namakku ee logathil endu nashtapettalum namakku adu bharamayittu maarathilla Hallelujah this is what happened in the life of Ezekiel and he was giving that special message to the people of God and and he was saying that okay even though i lost my beloved wife i was not allowed to cry i was not allowed to 
mourn about that because that was to give or deliver a special message for the people of Israel. Hallelujah. So let us also take that application this morning that even though we are losing something in this world, even though we are losing somebody in this world, when our focus is not on, on those things, not on those persons, but our focus is in heaven and eternity. And we are always looking forward to God and the eternity. We will be there once with Jesus. Hallelujah. That is our expectation. Hallelujah. And don't give more preference for the earthly things than God and God's word. And third when person that I'm going to talk about is Jeremiah. Okay. So Jeremiah is the third example that we can see that in, in, in uh, specifically uh, in the chapter, uh, chapter 13. We are reading that God was using Jeremiah to deliver a wonderful message to the people of God. Just like you know, we know that Jeremiah was a, was a weeping prophet. Okay? He, he was always crying. He was always weeping uh, whenever he is uh, uh, remembering the, the, the situation of the people. And whenever he was uh, 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 commanded to uh, share a message, he was crying in the presence of God by understanding oh, why these people are doing this and why these people are uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, continuing uh, in this I mean, sinful nature and everything. He was crying every time. He was crying everything remembering the situation of the people. Okay, so that person, once he was commanded by God in chapter 13, verse 1, and he was told by to buy a linen belt and put it around his waist. Can you read that verse maybe? 13 verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 1. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And 2 and 3 also. This is the second person, okay, third person, yeah, Jeremiah. First person was Hosea, the action preacher, Hosea, the action preacher, Ezekiel. Then this is the third person, the action preacher, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a morning person and he was always crying in the presence of God because of many reasons. At the same time, in chapter 13, he was commanded to buy a linen belt. He was commanded to, I mean, buy a linen belt. And he was supposed to put that around his waist. Linen belt around his waist. Okay. Then he was supposed to take that and hide it inside a rock. When it was taken out after many days, it was totally damaged. Listen. So this is what is going to happen in the life of Jeremiah. He was not knowing what is going to happen in future. But he was doing that. Okay, taking that linen belt and he was, I mean, putting that linen belt around his waist. And then Malala Thirunda Varadhi Rikkinnada, Arakkacha. Alley, from Arakkacha and Varadhi Nabada Ariel Kettunnada Ayirikkinnada, Uru Belt. That Uru Belt Poli Avan Indi Yanam. Adine, Edutta Ariel Kettunam. Then, he was supposed to take that one and to hide inside a rock. Eh? Taking that, first of all, he want to buy that belt. Okay, buying that belt and uh, hiding inside a rock then then he was supposed to i mean hide it on in, in a rock and after many days he want to take it out when he was taking out that belt the linen belt he could see that it is totally damaged it is totally damaged that is what we are reading in that particular chapter okay and why god has asked to this prophet jeremiah to do that the message is in, in chapter 13, verse 10 and 11. Okay. In 10 and 11, it says that, okay, chapter, chapter 13, verses 10 and 11. These wicked people who refuse to listen to my words, who walk in the stubbornness of their heart and have gone after their gods to save them and to bow down to them, let them be just like this waistband which is totally worthless. That means, after when he was taking that belt, out of the rock. Okay. It was totally worthless. That means he, he was not able to use that belt again. Okay. And again. 11. For as the waistband clings to the waist of a man. So I made the whole household of Israel. And the whole household of Judah cling to me. Declares the Lord. That means when he was wearing that belt in his waist. It was so close to that waist. Right. I mean, that belt was so close, and the belt was, I mean, uh, cling upon, uh, cling to the, uh, clinging to the, to the waist of that person, 
But God said, you have to take it from there and you have to hide it in a rock and then after many days when you are taking that, you will not be able to use that one. That's the reason it says in, in verse 11, when you are, I mean, taking that and that might be for me people for renown, for praise and for glory, but they did not listen. What is, the, what, is, what is the lesson that we are receiving from there? You know, these people, the people of Israel, they were always, I mean, once they were always clinging to God. And they were so close to God. They were having a close relation with God. I mean, at the same time, after many days, that friendship is lost. That fellowship is lost. That relationship is lost. And the thing is, they were not listening my word. Man, that means they were not listening my word. That is what we are reading there. Man, that means let us have an intimate relation with Jesus and do not lose your relationship with by defiling yourselves. You know, these people of Israel, they were defiling themselves because of many things. Man, they were defiling themselves with the idols of the, 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 the Gentile people. Man, they were I mean, intermingling with the other people. That's the reason God said, when you are damaged fully. Man, you are fully damaged now and if you want to come back to me and call upon the name of the Lord and this is the chance and this is the opportunity that God is giving you, then you can come back. You can call upon the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is the real message that God was sharing or conveying to the people of Israel. And the application is, hallelujah, and let us have that intimate relationship with God always. Then let us listen to the word of God and also, I mean, do not lose your relation with God by defiling yourselves. Amen. And again, the next action which was uh, uh, given by Jeremiah. Uh, the next one, Alvin. Yes. Jeremiah, again, in, in chapter 18. This is a familiar chapter for us, right? Familiar chapter. Okay. Jeremiah's life, there are many, 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 many examples and there are many actions that he was doing. But we are taking only, I mean, one or two I mean, things from that, I mean, uh, that chapter 18. Okay. Chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. Let's read that verse. 18, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> So, listen, you know, in, in, in verses 1 and 2, we read that he was told to go to the potter's house. Amen? And first of all, he was supposed to rise up from there. He was supposed to rise up them from there. And he was supposed to go down to the potter's house. Go down. That means, you know, Jeremiah was thinking, okay, I'm a, I'm a great prophet and I, I'll be here only and I'll be preaching like this and doing all those things. But he was not able to and he was not willing to go down but God said you have to rise up from there and go down to the potter's house from there you are going to get some lessons Amen? so when we are ready to go down and when we are ready to obey the word of God God wanted to speak to us and God wanted to give us, I mean, important messages or lessons to, the, to, to teach us in our life, in our personal life. That's what we are reading there. And he was supposed to rise up from there and he was supposed to go down to the potter's house and he had to watch the activities which is happening in the potter's field and he had to see the potter, see the clay, see the wheel, see the vessels and he was supposed to see the spoiled clay in the hands of God. By seeing all those things, let us understand that when he was watching the potter and what he was doing, the potter was doing many things and he was making or meld, molding the, 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 the vessels eh, or the pots or something like that and when it was made, when that clay became marred. Okay? And the clay became defiled in the hands of the potter, and that's the reason in uh, uh, chapter 18, verses 6 to 10, that we are reading that, chapter 18, verses 6 to 10, we are reading that, but this is the message that God is God wanted to give you. This is the real message that God wanted to give you, that what is happening in the life of the people of Israel, and you have to know that God's long-suffering character is still there. That means God's long suffering, suffering, uh, I mean, character, and that they are the Yutan Durka Shamayula Subhava Ipurum, 
നിങ്ങൾക്ക് വേണ്ടി വെളിപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് എന്താന്ന് അറിയാമോ ഈവൻ തോ യു ആർ മോഡ് ഇൻ ദ ഹാൻഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ദ പോട്ടർ ഹലലൂയ അമ്മടെ നമ്മുടെ മലയാളത്തിൽ വായിക്കുന്നത് എന്നറിയാമോ ആ ഒരു കുശവന്റെ കയ്യിലിരിക്കുന്ന ആ മൺപാത്രം എന്തായി തീർന്നു ചീത്തയായി പോയി എന്നാ വായിക്കുന്ന അല്ലെ ചീത്തയായി പോയി അപ്പം ചീത്തയായി പോയിട്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ആ പാത്രമാണെങ്കിൽ പോലും ഗോഡ് ഈസ് എ പേഷ്യൻ ഗാഡ് ഓക്കെ ദ പേഷ്യൻസ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ദീർഘക്ഷമ നമുക്കവിടെ കാണാൻ സാധിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ഗാഡ് ഈസ് എ ലോങ് സഫറിംഗ് ഗാഡ് ആൻഡ് ഹീസ് ഐസ് ദറക്കെ വൻ സ്റ്റിൽ ഐ എം മോൾഡിങ് ഐ എം റെഡി ടു മോൾഡ് യു ഇഫ് യു ആർ ഈൽഡഡ് ഇൻ ദ ഹാൻഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ഇഫ് യു ആർ റെഡി ടു വൻ വിൽ ഫുള്ളി സബ്മിസീവ് ഇൻ ദ ഹാൻഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ഐ എം ഗോയിങ് ടു മോൾഡ് യു just like i mean i am going to make you another vessel i can make you another vessel that is what the lesson is i mean given there and also we understand the sovereignty and the authority of god and we are supposed to be submissive to the will of god hallelujah especially chapter 18 verse 6 it says that can i not a house of israel deal with you as this pot potter does declares the lord behold like the clay in the potter's hand so are you in my hand oh house of israel that means you are in my hand just like a clay in the hands of a potter you are in my hands i can do anything to you because i have the authority god said i have the sovereignty i have the authority and i can do anything according to will according to my will and according to my purpose this is the this is the real message that uh, when jeremiah jeremiah was uh, i mean delivering to the people of god hallelujah and uh, with that uh, i would like to close uh, i mean today's message today and uh, let me one more thing was there in chapter 19 uh, in in chapter 19 verse 1 also I mean there the same thing is happening the the says the lord go and buy a potter's earthware jar and take some of the elders of the people and some of the senior priests and then go out to the valley of ben hinnom which is by the entrance of the port's door and proclaim there the words that i tell you that means you know when we are when uh, jeremiah was commanded to buy a clay jar also and take some of the elders and senior priests with him and uh, he was supposed to go to the benkinom later benkinom valley and later to break the jar in front of these people and god said that this city of jerusalem will be broken as a potter's vessel because israel did not listen to the word of god hallelujah but god said that in in in, in chapter 19 also god is saying to the people of israel that if you are i mean submissive in the hands of god again i'm telling you that god can use you god can use you i mean so god has a purpose and god has a special plan about you i mean if you are submissive in the hands of god god is going to use you hallelujah so let us all i mean come it also with the mighty hand of god and let us pray together this morning i have been talking about uh, i mean the prophet ezekiel and his life experience and also i was talking about uh, i mean prophet jeremiah i mean different experiences of jeremiah but the lord is speaking to us hallelujah even though those people those action preachers even though those prophets, but we're going through the tough situation I mean God was planning to give something I mean special message a special I mean message was conveyed and communicated to the people of Israel that they are supposed to be be back to the Lord and they are supposed to have that close relation with God hallelujah so let us also surrender our life in the presence of God and let's pray together shall we all stand together in the presence of God and let's pray together and let's remember I mean what the things that God has to 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 tell us this morning that uh, I mean we are supposed to I mean be submissive in the hands of God hallelujah amen praise God hallelujah I've been the next one that you know what is that the earthly things may be fade away but God's word never fades men remember one thing the earthly things whatever it may be earthly people earthly things whatever it may be it may fade away but God's word never fades that's what we understand from the Ezekiel's life that Ezekiel was so close to his wife and he, it, he she, she was so favorable for him and she was so loving to him but she lost i mean he lost her I mean, suddenly I mean, so that's the reason that god said to them that everything everything every earthly things that we that you see in this world is will fade away but god's word never fades hallelujah and let us not give priority to any earthly things than god and his word i mean let me encourage you this morning that let us give more importance and more priority to god and god's word than all the earthly things and also let us keep an intimate fellowship 
with Jesus. Let's keep an intimate fellowship with Jesus. And let's be submissive in the hands of God. And allow him to mold us as useful vessel. And let us listen and obey his word. And let's not be broken. Rather be united. Amen. So we are seeing in chapter 19. Jeremiah chapter 19. That, I mean, that he, was, I mean, he was asked to break the jar. Break the clay jar. To say that, I mean, it is now broken, but we are going to reunion that. Amen. Hallelujah. So God will do that in our life also. When whatever happens, you know, sometimes, I mean, we are going through the troublesome situation. Whenever we are going through the difficult situation, we are asking to the Lord, Oh Lord, why you are asking me to do this? Why this experience in my personal life? But God says that I mean, even though you are going through that particular situation, even though you are going through that I mean, I mean, painful situation, God wanted to mold you again. Hallelujah. Just like a clay, the, the, the mad clay, clay in the hands of the potter. Sometimes we are also mad and we are not, we are not a worthy I mean, vessel. We are not a useful vessel in the hands of God many a times. But God is saying that if you are ready to come to the, come to the presence of God, if you are ready to I mean, have that same fellowship together with God, and if you want to keep that I mean, relationship with God, hallelujah, close relationship with God, I mean, God is able to I mean, I mean, make you, God is able to mold you, and he will make you as a nether vessel, and God will use you for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So let us also submit us with the mighty hand of God. Let's pray together for the blessing and let's pray together there. And God is going to use us together. And God is going to reunion us. And God is going to mold us again. And all of our church people. Let's pray for all the church people. All the church members. That God is going to reunion us and regather us. And he will I mean, build us up I mean, for the glory of the kingdom of God in the coming days. Let's pray together. And I request uh, meditating the word of God. I request uh, Sister Jaya to uh, lead us in prayer now.